What's going on everybody? And in this week's lesson, we are gonna talk a little hybrid picking. What it is and some simple and some more challenging exercises to kind of just incorporate it into your playing if you're looking to do so. So what is hybrid picking? Essentially, I'm playing with my pick like I normally would, but then I'm gonna take advantage of my middle finger and ring finger and play together, right? So I can pick and then use my fingers to play higher notes or adjacent strings. Over the years, I've, you know, I kind of incorporated hybrid picking basically through two different avenues, right? Throughout college, I played a, a lot of classical guitar. So I, that's pure finger style. So, you know, the strength and independence of the right hand is there for me. And then later on after that, I really kind of spent some time working on my legato technique a la like Tom Quayle or some of the modern fusion players, and they incorporate the hybrid picking a lot. So that was a lot, a little challenging because it wasn't necessarily picking out nice chords. It was more of a really adjacent string kind of thing. Let's, co let's look at some simple kind of things that we can get it going, and then maybe some more challenging stuff. All right, so you hear me talk a lot about chord scales on this channel, right? So let's just do that right away. We can take the first three chords of C major, Right, and we can go C, D minor, E minor. Right, major bar chord, minor bar chord, minor bar chord, fifth string based. All right, now what we can do is we can remove one of those notes and make, play what they call a spread triad. Ooh, right, but really what we're gonna do is we're gonna play the power chord and then the second string of the chord. And we can put a finger on every one of those notes. So it's three, five, five, like that. And I'm gonna use my middle finger to pluck that second string. And I can go through those chords just like that. whatever kind of riff you want. It's just a nice, easy chord to incorporate something. You know, a lot of us hold the pick with our first finger. Maybe our, our fingers are kind of opened up across the strings as we mute. So they're not out of position. We're not doing anything too crazy here. We're just not going with our pick. Right? And again, we just move that through the chords. That's one way to do it. Another kind of similar concept, right? We can play, again, not so spread out chords and we can play more adjacent strings, all right? So we'll do the same chords, C, E, E, F, G, but we'll play little shell seven chords, right? Three, two, four. That's a C major seven. We do five, three, five. Ring finger, first finger, pinky. Move that up a whole step. Back to the first chord, seven, eight, nine. And then we have this 10, ten slightly different shape, right? And again, this is just to kind of work that technique. So I can go pick middle ring finger. Now, admittedly, the adjacent pick middle finger ring finger is more challenging for me. It doesn't feel very comfortable. My hand feels very confined, right? It's easier for me when the, the chords are kind of spread out. So a lot of times if I come across patterns like this, I will do a pick, pick, down, down, middle, like that. Pick, pick, That's actually really a lot more comfortable for me. So now let's look at something maybe a little more challenging and maybe a little more fun and creative as well. All right, we're gonna be playing E minor, D7, C major seven, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pick the power chord with my pick down, down, and then I'm gonna play the minor note or the you note the middle finger's on on the second string with my middle finger just like we did before. But what I, what I like to do is that. So we're gonna go back, we'll play those three notes, back to the low string, with, back to the root note with our pick, and then our ring finger is gonna play the high string. 
Okay, and we're already kind of in position. We don't have to jump up to do that. Kind of like that. And you get a nice, really tight left hand, right hand muting, right? The unspoken rule of guitar. There's a lot going on there with your muting. Let's expand on that idea make it a little more challenging and maybe a little more creative for some of you, maybe, right? We're, so same thing, right? But now we're gonna repeat the power chord and then middle finger, I mean ring finger is now on the B string, pull off seven to eight, and then the middle finger plucks the G string and you hammer on seven to nine, right? Try to turn my hand. And now I can do that pattern for every, each chord. Right, a little tricky to get that going, but when you do, it sounds pretty cool. Right? And you can hopefully maybe get a lot of mileage out of that, come up with some really cool ideas, All right? Another thing that we can do, this is challenging too, maybe unnecessary, but it's fun, is we might be familiar with the Paul Gilbert string skipping arpeggios. They look like this. Right? We skip the B string. Right? And a lot of times you can alternate pick through that and that's fine. Or even add some hammer-ons and slurs to get through it. But what we could do... Is that. So what we can do is down pick the root note. And just so you know, I'm playing 5, 4, 7, skipping the B string, 3, 7. 5, 4, 7, 3, 7. Okay? So I can down pick the root note. My middle finger can pluck the G string on four, hammer on the seven, right? Our ring finger can play the high string on three, and then our middle finger plays the seven and I can pull off. And then I'm gonna upstroke the G string, pull off, and now I'm back to the beginning. Right? Nice clean way to kind of roll through that and you can get the fingers going as well. Cool, hope that helps. Now I also mentioned the legato aspect of it, right? And that was a little challenging because it's more on adjacent strings and you're using it to replace pick attacks so you don't get this unwanted accent, right? But really what it is, let's just say I play a G major scale here. Right? If I'm gonna legato or slur through this, I can hammer on those three notes and then with my middle finger play the fourth note. So there's my sixteenth notes, one, E, N, A, and then I can down pick on the two. Right? And then that way I can use that kind of technique to go through the scale. Like that. and you cr creates a nice smooth 16th note line through your legato playing without any unwanted accents because sometimes we tend to accent the string change and that's not the rhythm we're looking for and we also don't want that accent, right? Because we want 16th notes. There you go. Some simple, creative, and more challenging ways to hopefully incorporate some hybrid picking into your playing, All right? Down in the description below, you can find some tabs, and as always, let me know what you come up with. Until then, I'll see you next time. Thanks a lot.